is cracking, people. Iggy here, Thoughts Second Limited, the holster guy, and uh, I got a pretty cool build today. Uh, if you're not familiar, you can actually get clear Kydex. So we're going to be doing this holster in uh, clear. It's a little foggy because it's got the protective film on it so you don't scratch it, but uh, this is going to be clear. Should be cool. Uh, but this is going to be a uh, M9A3. Oh man, I totally thought it had a flashlight on it. Oh yeah, it does. Streamlight TLR. Alright, I read that wrong for a second. Alright. Throw this guy on here. There we go. Get my nickel. Alright. So this is going to be... Um, little interesting, kind of a pain in the butt, only because uh, we have to put the hood on it and the hood's going to be right over this area. So we're going to have to build up over it to um, put this on, which is really no big deal. We'll just add a couple pieces here and then go right on top. So it'll, it'll sit right on top of the um, of the safety. Uh, so it'll work out. It'll just be a little bit extra uh, material, which is, you know, perfectly fine. So we'll start off with our round widgets. Get our tape. I gotta warn you, uh, clear Kydex is, uh, oh, Holstex actually is what it is. It's very, I wouldn't say hard to work with, but it's more difficult to work with. And it's also very, very brittle. So, um, it'll actually get to the point where it will crack under normal use, which stinks, which is why I don't really offer it that much. So, but we're gonna throw this on here. I am actually going to cut that off. Go to the safety selector on this one. Remember, since this is clear, you're literally going to see all of the imperfections. So, you want everything more perfect than normal. Thank you. 
All right, and uh, hood, level two hood. So this guy's gonna sit here. We will need uh, that, other end, and then RTI 34. Let's see where it's gonna be good. Now this is gonna be extremely wide. So looks like right there is gonna be the best spot. And we'll see. Well, that actually fits pretty good there and doesn't really wiggle. So let's get that locked in. Let's go this way. But what I will do is add something under it. So I'll take a uh, quarter inch spacer and I'll just cut out a little section. take that little section and we'll shove it under it and that helps out there we go Let's throw this guy right here. And that will need something underneath, so we can actually use the rest of that because that will squish down into it. That's good right there. that now grab a sharpie or a marker go around we don't want this right around here all right so now we just have to build up something right here which is really just going to be that and that there and that seems tall enough yep so let's go this way And we'll throw this right there. This is going to be some wide holster, but nature of the beast. And this is going to be cut here, so I'm not going to worry about that.
right and then next is going to be the retention plate and let's see here start this up get my foam good I'll grab this I'm running out of MDF we'll get more oh, I lied I have another full sheet all right so good spot Cutting that out of the way so it looks better. Alright, let's go cut this now. middle Cut your piece. Which that should be perfect width wise. And all the way over it's about here. You want to make sure you score it pretty deep because otherwise it will crack and that's not fun so again take off the protective coating it's generally on both sides because if you leave this on and put it in the oven might as well just throw it out how clear that is um, nature of the beast it's going to fog up just a little bit and uh, that's when it cools and then it'll become clear again so all right let's uh let's heat this up and blow it off though so make sure it's completely clean
throw it in. Same, uh, same temperature, 350 degrees. You can see it starts to foam up, or not foam up, but it starts to get uh, foggy. So you see now it's turning white, and what will happen is uh, it'll stay that color until it cools. So nothing to, nothing to worry about. And then I'll rotate it. It's at 280 degrees now. And then at 350, I'll pop it out, put it down. Lay it down the orientation that you need. Push down on the grip. And stretch it over towards you. Hold it. Throw it down. This actually came out pisser. I liked it. It formed great. However, the sight channel was wonky. And that happened because I didn't have enough pressure when I was putting it in. When I released my hand, it boop, scooped up. So, what we're going to have to do is heat this back up and uh, reform it. And hopefully I'll have more tension on it. So, number two. So we're going to sit here and uh, warm up the decks a little bit. No, not the decks, rather, but we're going to warm up the foam. Uh, by doing that, it's going to let it cool um, slower, and uh, it actually helps definitely with the, uh, the clear. So, But once that's good, this one's still a little uh, not as hot, so I'll go ahead and get that so it sits there. But you'll see now. Let's open this up. Just throw that... Blow it off first. Crap out of it. But throw that in there. That should be a hundred times better.
Can't ask for better than that. Whew. Just look at that. All right, that looks good. I'm happy with that. Absolutely. Mm. All right. Cool a little bit more. Cool. Let's get this trace. Now, the only thing that really stinks about all this is the fact that um, your pencils don't really work on it. It just scuffs it just a little bit. So uh, pay close attention to what you're doing on it. Because like I said, it's you have to get it in the right light. And finishing these edges are absolutely terrible because obviously you see all around it but when you do it right it looks good because if you go too fast you get the white it happens when drilling it's no big deal but if you're um, sanding uh, you get the white when it melts uh, let's see so we're gonna come up to there go down oh my oven's still on shut that off Five, but we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go straight down. I think that would look better. And we can angle it and hit it here. You're gonna see the entire thing anyway. So I'll do that. Cut this this way. And go this way. Figure out where the trigger guard is. Coming out this way. Yep. And then over. And then we'll figure this part out later. So go ahead and cut that.
fun begins. Pick off some of this stuff, but we gotta get our sanding sponge. Um, so we could do a lot of this by hand. I I can find it. And you see this white line that is uh, melted clear. So we'll go ahead and hit it with our thousand grit sponge all the way around it until that white line is gone. down inside and out see any of it left other than just powder so we'll go ahead and uh, do the rest of this so we know these three holes so we'll go ahead and drill those and you really want to let the uh, drill bit do the work because you will crack it Change the bit, grab your RTI, line it up, take your pilot hole, and then finish drilling. And we're gonna go ahead, make this piece right here. Make that out of, out of 
clear as well. If I could get it off. There we go. Clamp that. And these holes are oversized. Throw some slotted posts through it. And what's great about clear is there's no guesswork anymore. That's awesome. <laughs> Maybe I should do clear from now on. All right, so all those are in. I'm still gonna oversize these holes. And I'm gonna cut this to a nice Nice shape. Might as well grab all the hardware that we need as well. Got this guy, we got this guy. Right. First things first, long threaded posts. And our half inch ones, our half inch rubber. Half inch rubber. Actually, it's like 0.45, so it's technically not a half inch. Tighten this one. So the bottom one's tighten all the way. Top one, just snug it. Reason being, that's the pivot point. And you don't want to over tighten it because what will happen is it, it stops it from flinging forward. All right, next one, Grab the plate. Right. 
grab a wheel as in the RTI wheel to make sure you have clearance just made it awesome now what I'm still gonna do is I'm gonna back these out just a hair and that'll give it more angle out so we'll get that uh, let's add in our retention let's get the same size ones There is the retention. Throw firearm in. Check your clearance. You gotta clear the hammer and the dovetail, which we did. Alright, mark that there. Drill that hole. Again, let the drill do the uh, the work. Clean it. Deeper. You don't want this one. You want the other one it comes with. There we go. That's a quarter inch. Then you take the eighth inch washer, grab the hex bit, lock tight the hex bit, throw that on there. And what that will do is it'll tighten against the um, slotted post, which allows this to have uh, free play and Bam. You gotta remember though, you can't keep playing with it because as it travels, it will loosen it. So let it sit in this position uh, until the Loctite hardens. Uh, and yeah, bam, there it is right there. So a see-through, I have actually a Beretta. It's not an M9. It's a little bit different, but you can see, you can still see it right through it. It's a completely different shape. Um, this is actually a blank firing gun. So the barrel is solid and uh, shoots eight millimeter blanks. Uh, found it at a gun show, I paid 10 bucks for it and I used it to uh, practice laser engraving. I haven't gotten to this one yet, but as you can see, it goes through and you can still see it, no problem. So, put that down. So there is a Beretta M9A3 with TLR HL. We're gonna loosen that up just a hair. And uh, that'll be for a G-code Thyrig. And there you go, with the clear. Bam.